Hello, this is Jen Jeff here, and I'm doing an unusual thing. It's a recording of the battle I called uh, Verdun is Calling or something. Uh, to see what happened and why I did so well when I genuinely shouldn't have. And, uh, well, first thing I noticed is Septimus did not actually deploy during the deployment phase. Nobody else marked this location, and Septimus kind of came in after. So, oh, well, there's first sign of this first error here is where something went wrong. Because some people do just kind of forget about this area. Which means Septimus is, call, is covering from about here all the way out to about here, which is a really wide front for one person to have to cover. No matter what, you, what deck you're using, even if it's the second blindy French deck. Meanwhile, I've got errors to my left, and then me here. So I'm covering. I'm covering from about here to there, because they're stubborn on my right. Errors to my left, who's covering from here to out there. So he's covering. Septimus has to cover from here to there, and I have a very much narrower front. So already this really isn't working to Septimus' advantage, because he's deployed late and he's covering a very large front. That is a really heavy anti-tank gun to be right there. Ah, go 88. Should be able to pin all that. Maybe. Oh, that went badly for that one tank. Oh, the armored car is destroyed and the 88 is pinned. So, yeah, back to the main area. So, uh, Septimus here did not go very far forward because he has a huge area to cover. And I'm just bringing in more stuff. No artillery with this deck. I don't have any artillery whatsoever. But right now all I'm doing is fortifying my position, shoring it up, getting ready for what I'm expecting to be an inevitable counterattack. Which never really comes. Well, it does come. It does come eventually. Stubborn really doesn't have that much over here. Did he lose it all? I'm not saying a huge amount of area where it's all lost. But he just doesn't have much. There's this thing that got a direct hit with something. Oh, it's a plane. No, that's probably it because he brought planes right in the very beginning. He probably didn't have... Uh, much else to bring. Still shoring up here. This ended up pretty devastating for the Allies. This guy managed to take his buildings there, but they don't have these buildings, which is unfortunate. They do have these woods, if barely, the auto matchy are coming up. It'd be good if the infantry were back here in these trees, but they'd still be spotted. Now, if we put them there, they could avoid these tanks and wipe out these guys, because the auto matchy here are useless in the open field. The Gavardia is a little bit better. Yep, I'm still just bringing in recon and anti-tank guns. This is where they start driving through the trees. Ares has a Yagged Panther and Tolda too. Little tanky tank. And Stubborn is using that stuff. This guy, he didn't hit fall back on. He should have hit fall back. They're being flanked by the side here. Oh, 
Oh, that thing got lucky. Yeah, so I'm building up and fortifying my position, taking care of the occasional half track that exposes itself. It's wasting APCR on a half track. truck. Certainly shooting up that B-25 there. Lago is showing up to an extent. Septimus still has most of this front to himself, with his leftmost unit being here. And his rightmost unit being in these buildings here. So yeah, he's got a huge area. I don't. The egg pans are taking out something. I forgot to look at what it was. Armored car. Could be this or could be a scout car. 88 millimeter pumpkin coilless rifle coming in. Some T70s. Fighting a Panzer A. Or Panther A. Ah, the expensive command. Bring another flak unit. And I just have more Ertz at Strooping coming in. Trying to get my anti tank gun to shoot and kill this recon tank here and there. Elsewhere, Haven is attacking. Stubborn is count is uh, bombing. Stubborn deployed mostly Air Force. Wow, that is a uh, bombing and a half. Four ten dropping. We got the diggers leader there. It's really too bad that this thing is still pinned. Nope, there it goes. There it goes, it fixed itself. Okay, now Septimus is bringing in his 60mm mortars. And this guy's dropping his 81 mils. So counterattack is going in there. Fighting continues in these trees as usual. Allies have that town, allies have these buildings. Ooh, there's a panther all the way over here. Pack 40 is still not in a position to get this. Moving up the anti aircraft guns. I'm actually preparing to attack as much as I can without mortars. Because considering the weak play I've seen so far with the entire center area just being surrendered to us for lack of a better term I'm looking at moving forward and taking the town because I don't expect this to be particularly well defended and he is defending it as well as could be expected for having to cover such a wide space 
all the 60 millimeter mortars that he's bringing in. Looking around the map elsewhere. Pioneers engaging the two inch mortars. These mortars are unloaded. Here we go, 75 mil guns coming into effect. Tank is taken out. Simulation here is taking these, I'm just going to call them factory buildings. Well, they're not really factory buildings. That panther is still over here. Ooh, good shot, HS-129. Okay, so I think this is where he starts to do his little tag. And is this the smoke? Yes, this is the smoke. So this is actually really, really good. He's dropped smoke in front of my troops so that they can't see. Now their line of sight is blocked in many spaces. He does screw up and drop regular high explosive here, which doesn't achieve anything. The problem is he should have waited to do that until these guys are actually in position. But he didn't. So now this smoke's ticking away. And it's getting to be less and... It, it's time is coming up. It's running out of time before the smoke dissipates. And the doesn't have his troops in position. So it takes him too long to get going. This guy, he almost lost those sappers. And then he loses them, because he didn't unload them. And he didn't smoke over here. So now these guys are coming in. So other than the timing, because in a moment the smoke will go away and he no longer has cover. And he doesn't keep dropping more smoke. Nor does he use high explosive to pin troops down. Particularly against the line of Ertz's troop and where they'll just run away. He's got a bunch of troops coming into this attack, not refreshing the smoke, and not really using the mortars particularly effectively or quickly. So he does concentrate them and get a bunch of these guys to fall back, but my front line's a lot wider than that. And he does try to bring that in, but it doesn't work. Because I've got these boosted to two-star radio. So he never refreshes the smoke, and eventually he just gives up his attack. Because even in a good position, in a good position, even Earth Stroop can do very, very well. So everything gets thrown back: His sappers, vultures, commander, and sappers unit. Which really, he doesn't have a hell of a lot there. And this was coming out to take care of that, but then it started getting shot at by the freaking 57 mil. I'm like, nope, you get out of the way. It's your command tank. I don't want you dying. Shockingly, it, uh, no, it does get damaged a little bit from that with a number of hits. Now, I don't have borders or anything on my side to cover my own attack with. Send these guys out. Like, go kill that half-track. 
problem solved. So Septimus is trying to get more troops in. Drop some mortars down. I got some Sturm Jaegers coming in. These guys, another Stug. Now, I launch an attack with barely any support. I've got no artillery. I have two tanks and one anti-tank unit with another tank coming in, although these are not tanks or should be under the tank destroyer line because that's what they are, tank destroyers. But considering the weak attack and the fact I really haven't been opposed in these trees, I attack feeling pretty confident in the situation. Hurts its troop and backed up by a few regular Jaeger pioneer units. Now, the nice thing with this is Hurts its troop and when they get pinned, they fall back. And because they're falling back, the opposing side's infantry ca targets the next closest unit. Th that becomes now the closest unit. And then that unit gets pinned and falls back. Now, they usually don't actually take losses in this. So both of these have been pinned down and they're running away from machine gun fire, but neither of them took losses. And they have no machine guns, so they just keep engage they keep running forward till they can engage with their rifles, which only have a 500 meter range. Now the Jaeger Pioneers are behind them, backing them up, and they've got machine guns with a 750 meter range. Which means these infantry Instead of shooting the effective units that have three, two to three stars, they're shooting the Urchit Street, which just don't really take losses that much. And then they run away from fire, and the next Urchit Street line gets shot. So these are now acting as a really nice advancing meat shield. All the Jaeger Pioneers with their MG42 fire rain death on the enemy infantry covering the advance of the Urchin Street. See, I don't have a lot of tanks covering this, and they're not really using their machine guns, but the, Ur the Pioneers here are using their machine guns to cover, and same with the Sturmier, using their machine guns to cover the Urchin Street. Then you combine that with uh, one two studs that are currently backing up by shooting them at the infantry. It's going... It'll be going well. And he does counter batter with his mortars, but, well, they're not hitting anything because the infantry has moved away. They just made that 50mm anti-tank gun to be one of the most dangerous anti-tank units in the game. Because that's how one-man anti-tank guns work. And again, Hertz and Struppen are moving into range to engage, and the Sturm Jaegers and Sturm Pioneers back him up with machine guns. And the Sturm Jaeger has spotted the 57mm cannon and pins it down with machine gun fire. Enemy units taken out. These guys shift their fire to the next unit as these guys move in and engage. Eventually, close enough range that this machine gun start to have an effect. And they're dropping more mortars in. Yeah, I moved those guys forward. They're desperately trying to hit my better infantry with the mortars, but it isn't really working. comes another Stug 3. So like these guys aren't engaging because these weapons, the carbines, don't have the range to, so they're engaging only with the Bren, and then that is it. The sappers have better rifles so they can engage at longer range, but they're just being overwhelmed by sheer number of troops.
you know, the stones are getting any more shit about this. I'm trying to get something into position to kill that char. Oh, the 75 did it for me. Because he's in position to see down that road. Which isn't what the view range says, but okay. Worked, so. Sappers are taken out and sending in these flat guns to try to take my stuff out. Enemy aircraft coming by. This is now close enough that it can hit these things, and he does indeed deploy it. But since it keeps coming in, it's spotted by my stuff. I think I shoot it down. I have more Jaeger Pioneers moving in. I've got three Stugs here now instead of just the one. That thing escapes. This Char M5 has gotten to a spot where the 75 pack is shooting at it and takes it out. Now, I didn't push my tanks forward because I thought there might be anti-tank infantry in here. I wasn't sure what I was facing. And I could have actually pushed this Stug straight into all the mortars. Actually, straight through to the other side of the town. Because there's really nothing there. And I'm keeping my anti-tank guns in the back here, so that if I do lose and get pushed out by tanks and stuff, these will immediately take all the tanks out and make them think again about attacking into the town. Now that they do have sappers, this will be where the tanks will come if they had pushed them forward. So yeah. I attacked only because Septimus here was uh, not putting a lot of pressure on me, so I figured it was a weak front. Septimus was wait, late to deploy and covering a very, very wide front by himself. So it was indeed a weak front to attack. I smelled blood in the water and was correct in that, in smelling that blood in the water. So I took advantage of it. Even then, I didn't have the intelligence to tell me, just, I just didn't see it, to tell me that at the time I had attacked, there was no anti-tank infantry in the city, so I didn't know I could actually push my tanks through. There was a time I could have gotten away with that. That's something I'd rather not find out by punching, in, by punching tanks through towns and getting it destroyed by AT, a lesson the Russian commanders would do very well to learn. <clears throat> so I'm now just trying to fight my way through these sappers. But there's only a few minutes left. So in this... Ah, bringing my artillery, but that 90 mil there spots it. Oh, that sucked. These 90s are really good. And if you actually give them... If that thing actually had rank, that probably would have shot my plane down. Had there been much more time, just from the disparity of forces, I could have gotten through this with the support from areas here with their Turans that are driving in. This would have allowed us to get right through into their rear area. Although I'm getting sloppy here for getting on one of the Jaegers. And these don't have a lot of rifles. So yeah, um... How did Septimus do overall? He was in a really terrible spot, we'll put it that way. Septimus was in a god-awful position. 
he had a wide front and he didn't have enough troops or support to cover it. As such, I broke into this town using basically chaff and World War I equipment in a World War I style. Jump over and out of the trench and go over the no man's land and succeeded with minimal support. Oh, nice. Stubborn bringing in his aircraft. Which was a nice last second bombing run. It was basically over at this point. It took out the mortars. So, Septimus' attack early on, dropping smoke here and some HE there by mistake, was a good attempt, but he didn't have everything timed. He didn't have anything ready to go when he dropped the smoke. And as such, only half the attack was covered by smoke, and by the time it wasn't covered by smoke anymore, I could kill everything with a good field of fire. Interlocking fields of fire from even Earth's strooping can stop a hell of a lot. Backed up by some 50mm anti-tank guns and that was all I needed to stop that attack. He did not continue to use his mortars during the at that attack to force all the Earth's strooping back, which would have been the most effective thing to do was just drop high explosive shells, um, pin them all, and they'll run away. He didn't do that. Instead, my guys are, except for one spot, so instead my guys are able to fight and throw everything back. Because he didn't have his stuff in position. Uh, his deployment area was so wide it was weak, and I was able to just ruffle stomp it with garbage, and then bring up better troops in the, behind the garbage to keep up the attack. So by the time the battle ends, in five seconds, I was almost able to take this entire town with absolute minimal losses. So did, um, did he do bad? No. Septimus did what he could. It just, <laughs> it was just in a bad spot. There were a few things he could have done better, but... No, he was just in a bad spot and got overwhelmed between me and uh, Arius here on my left. There wasn't very much he could do. Yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that the game ended, I would have easily gotten the rest of the town. So yeah, Septimus, that, that sucked for you. It was good for me. And it was good for Arius. It was really good for me. A plus on the attempt, um, B on the execution. You need to deploy, get your stuff deployed and ready to go first, so that way you can order everyone to attack move while the preferably while the smoke rounds are still falling, so that way way you can take as most as much advantage of that smoke as you possibly can. Because if you wait until after the smoke has fallen, or if you don't deploy before the smoke has fallen, then you don't achieve anything. You also didn't smoke down both roads. You only smoked down one, and you lost an infantry unit in driving that half-track down the road on my right, your left, because you didn't smoke it. Uh, if you'd smoked down the road and deployed in the smoke, you could have gotten your guys unloaded much closer to my lines, and it was, would have been much more difficult, but because he didn't, I was able to use standoff rifle range, interlocking fields of fire. I don't need machine guns, nor do I need good troops of the backbone at that point. I can just take any old freaking militia, throw them into the woods, and go, hey, shoot that guy. And that is what happened. So you were just in a really bad spot. Good attempt, though. I just wanted to look back and kind of analyze that. Uh, I don't have any 120mm mortars in this. So yeah, good attempt. Again, A plus for the attempt. Well, really, <laughs> not a B. It was kind of an F in execution. Uh, better luck next time, because usually you do better. Or so I thought. Oh well. See ya.
Hello, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that wonderful fun stuff because subscribing to YouTube is no longer enough. Hit all the things, hit the like button, like the comments, comment multiple times, and don't forget to share. But subscribe and hit the bell. See you next time. Bye. I think our tank exploded. Whee! There it goes! <laughs> The plane or our tank? The t well, there's a tank flying through the sky.